I like this picture just because it's so easy for us to go the planets, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, the Sun is not a planet. And we've sort of got to get that very, very clearly. That the Sun <coughs> is this huge energetic being that is blasting forces out in every direction. And the planets are actually these compost heaps. <laughs> that the sun is blowing out all of this, all of this uh, matter and, and that it's being organized by the electromagnetic fields and as the planets are spinning around, they go <coughs> sucking up cosmic dust. And so they are just these balls of matter. Now, of course, that will catch fire eventually as we have on our planet and that will generate some energy and, it, and we have our own electromagnetic field. <coughs> So they do become dynamic beings, but they're not stars, they're not suns. And we have to make quite a clear distinction between a star realm and a planetary realm. Quite an important sort of distinction that we need to make here. Now this is the picture of just really getting it, that it's all about a shell, a three-dimensional onion that we, we are having to picture in our, in our heads. So when we come to this and we look at what is our environment, what is it, and this is what we actually have to acknowledge is there. That there is a galaxy, within that there's a solar system, within that we have an Earth within the solar system. But what's happening on Earth is that in our evolution we have this point where life starts to liberate oxygen and that this oxygen is building up over billions of years in our atmosphere and that because of that atmosphere and the oxygen in that atmosphere it has led to life forms and as we can see in this room the primary starting point of those life forms is this duality between male and female and that when the male and the female come together it creates physical bodies and those physical bodies as we identified have three parts the nerve sense rhythmic and metabolic system and this exists within the atmosphere and the atmosphere of course is made up of these elements of warmth and light and moisture and earth and so we find that the physical life forms of course are carbon based life forms the activity that's giving us this ability to have life through the atmosphere is oxygen that has been liberated by life. We got to the point where we were talking about um, the carbon and the oxygen and how these were acting as the carrier of the physical body and the oxygen is really a carrier of the etheric body. Uh, because of um, the oxygen that's in the atmosphere that's come from the life forms. Now similarly we can see how nitrogen is the element that we find around the planets and our own atmosphere is something like 80% nitrogen. So without the 20% oxygen we would be living in a completely nitrogen uh, environment. Now we can see that this nitrogen um, does also show up on the other planets and by the time we come to Uranus and Neptune the nitrogen ocean that is above us uh, has been consolidated into ice and uh, therefore there's this ice ring around it, the surface uh, of these planets uh, made of nitrogen. And uh, similarly, where we uh, see these hallucinogenic sort of drugs that are stimulating the astral activity, we, these are all nitrogen-based alkaloids. <clears throat> so when we see uh, nitrogen poisons taking place uh, in any kind of metabolic process, uh, it's just indicating that the astrality is becoming much more uh, dominant and, and, and this leads to the poisoning. Now when we go to the galaxy, we can see that the main uh, element that's in space is hydrogen and that the stars and so on are burning that hydrogen. 
and uh, running on that. So this is where we can see that this element of this spirit sphere, the galaxy, is uh, the element of hydrogen. So from this simple uh, picture, we can uh, find these anchors into the physical reality. Now, Rudolf Steiner made definite comments about these elements and um, talks of how they uh, work uh, with these elements. So through the various uh, medical lectures, we can find these comments about how the spirit is connected to hydrogen in the same way as the physical to carbon, the etheric to oxygen, and the astral to nitrogen. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit more later. At this point, though, I think what we want to be able to see is that uh, these the process by which things come into manifestation are really uh, showing that the stars are these uh, creative, architectural, formative forces that work through the solar system, through the atmosphere, and into the Earth. And that um, this is the sort of process of creation that we have occurring. Now, um, we need to just go back a little bit and um, come to this point again and see that what we're looking at are these uh, spheres of manifestation that we have around us. And when we look into that a little bit further, we can identify these different activities that are occurring. And we can identify that, that um, on the Earth and in the Earth sphere, we, we have these elements that are present. Uh, the atmosphere, we have the hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, earth, air, fire, water, and so on, come into the planetary sphere. Uh, and then we come into this zodiac sphere. So there's actually 12 layers that we can identify in this um, basic structural form. Uh, Leavegood in 1951 made it very, very clear that um, in every living organism, physical, etheric, astral, and spirit forces are active. Every living organism. In the plant, the physical and etheric forces work from within outwards and the astral work around it and the spiritual forces work from the starry distance where the archetypes of the plants are formed. Um, he then makes this comment, the effects of the etheric formative forces are always general ones. Never does an organism come into existence merely through the etheric, but only when the astral principle presses upon the ethereal. Um, so he talks about the astral nature streaming through a sevenfoldness and the spiritual activity coming through a twelvefold uh, quality. Um, in the plant, the seed is the carrier or the point of attachment of the spiritual forces forming the species, but the seed only unfolds when surrounded by physical, etheric and astral elements in such a way that these forces can stream freely through it together. So the main point of this slide is to really just um, consolidate that image that uh, we have these different quite specific layers in our environment. Each of them has a certain uh, quality given by the number that, that is working in there, the number of elements that are working in each part of this. And Rudolf Steiner talks about this all the time. He talks about a 12-fold, 7-fold, 4-fold, 3-fold, 2-fold processes. And that if we look for these basic uh, process patterns, when we come with his work, we're able to um, identify what he's saying and even predict what he's saying. And so this was the first thing I developed, was to see how all of these parts function as an expression of an unfolding vortex. And, and therefore we can see how the various bits are related to one another. And so we can see that in a sense through this red line we're getting this um, moon or earthly process uh, at each level. And similarly, the sun unfolds through this light and warmth process into these constellations here. Now, this was all covered in my book of Biodynamics Decoded, if you want to look into more detail about how that works. Now, the important process of this chart is to be able to follow the information, follow the thoughts from one layer to the other. And out of this, we're able to start to identify uh, 
um, what any particular influence is and and um, and how it relates to everything in its environment. And so uh, we come first to this understanding of the environment that we have with us. And as I said just a minute ago, the important part of this picture is that uh, we have all of these activities working from our environment into the middle. So this is where we can start from in our next uh, talk.